Hey guys, this is your hashtag student nurse RN. Welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, welcome. Please feel free to explore my channel. I have so much content um, that I wanted to share. So I wanted to talk about today how much I made as an LPN. Um, I know I'm a student RN now. I'm currently in my last term, guys. Yay! Super excited, super tired, super overwhelmed, and stressed. But I am super happy and super relieved because I have no more clinicals at this point of my program. So I have a lot of preceptorship um, hours, lab hours, and just like one to two classes. Leadership classes is like the last class that we do to learn how to delegate and time management and all those good things. So let's get right into the video. So for those who are new, again, welcome. Please feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. I'm going to be currently putting up content when I have time. As you know, those who don't know, I am a mom of three. I'm married. I'm also an army wife. So I have a lot going on, okay? So I wanted to talk to my girls out there who is curious about what I made as an LPN. And I'm going to be a little bit specific about where I lived at at the time because my husband was active duty. He currently just switched his unit. So he is with the reserve right now. Then he's planning on going back. I don't know what he's doing. But anyway, I wanted to put this video out for those who are curious about these coins, these money, uh, dollar bills, bread, whatever y'all call money. I wanted to talk about it. So let's start with talking about money. Who don't like money? First of all, as an OPN, nurse you can negotiate just like any other nurse when you find a job that you like please be patient when it comes to salary so what i did straight out of school with no experience i always del um not delegate but i always uh negotiate terms so for instance my first nursing job out of school as an lpn i worked in behavior health for a crisis unit for mental health, y'all. Yes, your girl was straight out of school, mental health style. And I was able to set my terms, which was because I worked the weekends, I wanted to be off for of Bible study and I wanted to start out a certain amount as a new grad. Now, I was in the state of Georgia at the time when I got my license because we moved from Jersey to Georgia because anyway, military orders. So I negotiate my terms. Um, I started with a travel agency, guys, since I got my license. Now, I didn't know much about agencies, but I realized because of my lifestyle moving around and being in unfamiliar territory that I don't know everything about that state or city. And so I feel more comfortable when I go to a travel agent. First of all, you get the job much quicker. It's a much quicker process. Um, they have tons of different hours, tons of different positions. And I just think agency just worked for me because then I can pick my hours and time. Um, I was just like a full-time employee was guaranteed my 40 hours at this mental health hospital, um, in Georgia. And I started as a new grad y'all did a drum roll, please. $18. That was my first nursing salary. Now that's not counting my weekends. Uh, money and that's not counting if I work like a special chef or anything like that. That was my base pay, my first job out of school as an LPN. Now, for those who's in other states that's more up north, y'all may get a little bit more coming out of school, maybe 20 or 21. But in the state of Georgia, that was really pretty good because Georgia is has a really low um, cost of living out there. I love it out there, guys. I didn't need that much money to live. Like that $18 was paying my bills, okay, paying my car note and everything. So that was my first salary coming out of school in the state of Georgia. Now, then I moved to the state of Virginia, which I am right now, guys, in my house, right, right now. And let me tell y'all guys, as an LPN, I bought my first home, but I'll do a separate video on that. I was able to sustain my bills when my husband came out of active duty so I could finish school. So when I got to the state of Virginia, I did the same thing. So this is where I started to kick it. When I came out here, I ran into one of the best travel agencies out here in the state of Virginia. Um, when I found the travel agency, the benefit of the program, I was pregnant at the time, guys, getting ready to pop. And yes, your sis went to a job interview, eight months pregnant, looking for a job because my husband just came out of active duty, got his DD-214. And so, yes, I needed to make some money. So 
when I went to this travel agency, everything with travel agency, guys, just keep in mind if you're new to it, it's super fast process. You might get a medication test with like just common drugs, um, things like that. You do your paperwork. If you're fast enough to have your paperwork together, it literally can take a day in your in your job. They'll send you your ID. You'll take a, send them a picture of yourself. They'll make an ID for you, mail it in the mail. They'll pay for your fingerprints and everything. I love agency. So anyway, so I got with this agency in Virginia. I was able to work at a hospital, girl. Yes, because you hear the, 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 the words of LPN can't work in a hospital. Not true. I was able to work in a hospital. Um, that was awesome. I was able to do pediatrics, geriatrics. I was able to do, I'm trying to remember all my jobs I had out here. Oh my God. Um, so acute care. I did assistant living. I did a lot of things with the agency. And what I like about working with the agency is that if you don't like a facility, so if you get into long, as an LPN, they always try to give you the most patients or whatever because they're stable patients, but still, that's a lot of patients. And when you're a travel person coming into a facility, first of all, all the staff know that you make twice as much as them. So they may give you a little attitude. They may try to bully you um, because they want you not to work there um, because the hospital's paying you like all this money. Now, guys, remember I said I started at 18. So once I started this travel job in Virginia, I started at 25 an hour. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I was making in the state of Virginia. So at this point, I was probably at, I want to say, my second year of experience as an LPN. And that didn't have much to do with that. That's just they based. That wasn't counting when I worked weekends. That wasn't counting if I worked like a mental health place or peas or whatever that didn't count my weekend rotations my nights if I work nighttime like I got differentials on top of my 25 an hour yes so I was cake now I'm caking it y'all because okay the state of Virginia their cost of living is in between it's not cheap and it's not expensive so your girl was making money okay that was a jump from 18 to 25 an hour so the maximum amount I made drum roll please as an LPN doing this travel job locally throughout my state was $27 an hour. Now, I know that might sound different if you're in another state that the cost of living is very high or the cost of living is low. This may seem like, oh, she is. How is she making all that? It goes by the state, guys. Literally, it does not go by like you are amazing nurse and this person is not. Don't go like that. It's just the fact of where you live at. So that was good for this state of Virginia, okay? So I was, max, the maximum, I was at 27. So when I came out of that type of work and I decided, let me just go work for a company. I needed nighttime hours and I worked for an assisted living for the first time. I don't like assisted living because of the med techs and the CNAs and all that. It was a high mess. But anyway, I did this. The maximum I made from that was $22 an hour. And that's just without travel agency that was nothing to do with that that was the actual company hiring me and i negotiate my salary now the way to negotiate your salary is you have to be firm and you have to be patient so there's a lot of hospitals that hit me up all the time they say hey i want you to work for us we have this awesome job i'll go see the job and another key thing is go see the facility that you're going to be working for i always tour the facility just to see what it looks like, to see how many patients they have, the acuity level, what is the patients doing, are they, is there type of some activities going on, how many nurses is on the unit. Like, as an opinion, you have to watch for those things because there's a lot of places that is not doing running correctly and you don't want to lose your license. So I always go, I always, you know, have an open mind to these other hospitals and facilities and long-term care and I'm just... Like, okay, I like what I see, but let's talk money. And I always let them know, like, hey, um, make sure, just know that I'm going to be negotiating my salary. Now, I don't always do it right away. I go through the interview process, and then when it's time to talk about salary, they always ask the minimum. I always stay firm to what I want. Even when I first came out here, and I, matter of fact, I worked in acute care out here as well, and I started in a regular company with them too, and I started at 18. But they was trying to talk about some 16 out here. I was like, uh-uh, never taking 16. I didn't make that since I was a teenager in New York. But again, New York cost of living was super high, so I was making that as a teenager, you know? But um, I actually know what number I need. 
So it's not going to be like a super, super high, high number. Like, hey, I want $50 an hour. It's more like in between. So it's not super low and it's not super high. And I based that off of my situation at the time. I was making the money for my household. So I knew exactly how much money I needed. And I know that as a nurse, I'm very valuable and I'm marketable. So I can go down the block and get a better offer. So what I did for one job was I said, I want to make 18 starting. Now, let's not count my night differential and because I did work nights. So that added like three extra, four extra dollars and weekends. And if you do overtime, they give you $100 gift cards. But we'll talk about that later. I gave them my solid number and they was like, oh, I'm sorry, but I don't know if HR is going to be able to match you and that. So I said, fine, that's fine because there's a place up the street that's willing to match my offer. So I thank you for your time. And literally, guys, when I was about to walk out of that place, somehow HR matched me for my salary for that place. And I'm just like, you guys already knew that I was going to let up like. I guess some people let up easily and like, okay, I'll take whatever because you're excited about coming out of school, no experience. So you feel like you have to take the lowest of the lowest. And that's not always true because sometimes you might have some CNA experience, medical assistant, you did something else. Um, and you know how much you need to, you know, pay for your bills. But do not be super crazy when you're trying to throw these numbers at them. Make it, like I said, right in the middle, reasonable. Know what they're offering for the job already. So if like they're offering you $20 an hour, and you want 22 or 23 then you say hey i want to be 23 an hour and they're going to be like well 23 an hour usually we pay you know give that to nurses that have maybe one or two years of experience and then you can validate well i worked as a cna or i worked as a medical assistant or i did this or i volunteered in the hospital or i did work in the hospital before or whatever whatever but for six months, whatever time you did, you, you make sure that you sell yourself to this company. And let me tell you, I'm very patient to the point where companies will literally, if I say no to their offer, even if it's a dollar off, I will say no. They will call me back. Hey, what about 1950? I remember one hospital that's really big out here. They wanted me to work with them and they were like 19. And I was at the time making 22 working assistant living, I'm like, why am I going to be going backwards to go 19? I was like, can you just match where I'm, what I'm making now? And if you can't match it, then, then I cannot work for you guys. Shorty kept calling me back. Excuse me. New York started coming out now. Like y'all shorty started calling me back every couple of days, every couple of days she kept calling me. Hey, did, you was a medical assistant? I said, yes. Oh, that's another dollar. But they never matched where I was. So I did not take that job. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just keep in mind that nursing is broad. Like literally there's so many jobs you could do. But you don't want to get yourself, you want to do get yourself in the door as a new grad coming out of school. You want to get yourself in the door. But at the same time, don't settle. Like Arvin is getting ready to happen for me. I'm graduating guys. So if my penning is in February, I will be doing the same negotiation. I do it every job especially if it's a nursing job. I look at how many patients, even if I don't have experience, I'll say, hey, I'm going to be working nights, midnight. I'm going to be taking care of three floors of patients or 30 or 40 patients. I think I deserve to be at my salary that I'm asking for. And I'm sorry if you can't match that, that's okay. I have other opportunities. Always make it seem like you have other opportunities. Never just be like, feel like you're fiending like just to just to get into somewhere and then you get in you don't like it and then then they don't pay you for what you do like that's just miserable kind of work and I don't want that but um so that's I wanted to be transparent because I wanted y'all to know the truth I wanted y'all to have some tips on how to negotiate and you stay firm like out here I already know what kind of hospitals I want to work for but I tell you this if they try to lowball me and they can't even if I'm not above what I was making as my last job then I would just move on until I'm satisfied with my shift, the hospital I'll be in. And it's a little different for RN because with RN, I definitely do want to get experience and I want to get my foot in the door, but I don't want to get my foot in the door where I'm I'm struggling. I can't pay my bills. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to put myself in that position where they're like, oh, you're a new grad. No, I'm a new grad, but I'm a full, I have four years of LPN experience. So in the state of Virginia, that counts. And the way it goes for RNs, if you work out here in the state of Virginia and you was LPN for four years, they count that as a level one. So they already pay you the next level because RNs go by level. So when you knew out of school with your RN license, you will be level one. Then when you get a tr your first year of training, you will go to level two. You will get a significant amount of pay difference. 
I don't know the amount yet because I will be telling y'all once I get my first little office coming in because I have interviews starting this week. So I will let you know what they're saying out here in the streets, but I am not going to settle. I already know which places I do not want to go in. I do not want to work for the ER, which I know is a specialty. So specialty is going to get um, different pay because it's higher acuity patients you're seeing. It's not like on a general floor. So I know that's going to be a big difference. And that's if I could get my foot in the ER. Um, I'm trying to go from where I'm at now straight to the ER. And I know God is possible he could do all things and i will trust him and i know that if it's meant for me to do that i will do that but that's my aim right now is just to get the specialty that i want as an rn because rn is a lot more stressful stressful guys i know that some opens is like oh you know it's just rn no hospital work is freaking stressful it was stressful just being a student rn now i mean even if i have experience it was just like oh my god these patients are sick left and right unstable you don't want to buy dying on you. So you just try, as a new grad with your RN, I would just suggest you go for your experience a little bit more than you're thinking about the money. Because your experience is what's going to sell you. I know RNs are making $50, $60 an hour, but they have experience behind anything. You don't want to be worried about money and you're not a competent nurse. I'm just going to say that. And that's just being true fool. I don't know what kind of nurse you want to be, but the kind of nurse I want to be is competent to the point where... I can come on a unit and I can do my job to the best of my abilities and practice safely. So if I can't do that, then I need to kind of get some more experience going in there and your money will come. I don't even look at it as, you know, I got to have like that top, top dollar. I just know that I want to get in the best hospital as an RN. Now, when it was different for LPN because LPN is more long-term care, geriatric, all that stuff like that. They're stable patients. Like you can do crazy overtime but in the hospital they don't like overtime and they give you your shift and that's about it okay so the only time you're staying extra is to do the training on the computer for the hospital like for the hospitals that's out here again remember it's different everywhere we go so starting out of school i'm hearing word on the street that is like 20 something maybe 28 or 26 or anyway i have a number in my head which i calculated where i want to start um or is going to be my minimum so, like I said, when you negotiate, make sure you're in the middle. It's not extremely high and it's not extremely low. And look at what you're bringing to the table and look at what they're offering. And always look at the facility. That's number one. Not just look at the money aspect, but look at, can I see myself working here? I know that they said they have another nurse for nights, but where is she? Like, I'm touring a place, only seeing one nurse, like one CNA. Like, you need to look at that stuff when the new LPNs come out of school, especially. You need to see how many CNAs is on the floor. What, how many, how many, what do they call it? When people quit, you can see the rates of how fast people are coming into that facility and quitting. You want to look at that. Um, you want to look at the reviews of the place, but it's best to go and see the facility before you just take a job. I always did that as an LPN because the work, the patient load is heavier. RNs, you know, you get a lighter patient load, but they're unstable. There's a big difference between LP and RN. I used to be like, ain't no difference really. You know, I did some a lot of the RN stuff, but let me tell you, honey, that mouse seal quickly once I started practicing in these hospitals, okay? I was like praying to Jesus that I didn't hurt nobody. I ain't make no mistakes. People were, go I mean, IBs infiltrating people, chest pains, all these people coding all over the place, rapid response team running around the hospitals. I'm like, what is going on, Lord? All I'm praying is, God, let me just do my skills to the best of my ability and get out of here like I don't want nobody. That's how strenuous it is to be in, in the hospital setting. Now, as an LPN, I can do my job and with my eyes closed. Now, with four years of experience, I can do any long-term care because I've done it all. But, and I, I will actually... A good tip would be for those that's getting ready to come out of school. If you can do an acute care rehab unit, a skills nursing rehab unit, that's, those those are usually in like the bummiest places. Uh, the places are like not well kept, but the skills you will get from them, that position is crazy. Like when I did acute care rehab unit for a regular company, I was doing wound backs, guys. I was hanging my antibiotics on my pumps. I was doing my feeding tubes, my G-tubes, my trachs, my peg tubes. I was doing dialysis. Let me repeat that. I was doing dialysis. I had to learn dialysis the same time I showed up for that job. 
when I got on the unit, I had two days of training, that's it. And that's why as a new grad, if you're getting ready to come out of RN school, I would suggest you go into a new grad residency program where they're going to train you to work on that floor and not for two days. I'm fighting to get into one. I applied to two already. I know I'm in my last term. I'm a little bit ahead of the game, but I'm trying to get the most help and experience possible under my belt. But anyway, as an LPN, I went on this rehab unit. And I had to had two dialysis patients. Never did dialysis in my life, honey. I had to learn dialysis that night. I usually work night shift. I called that one eight hundred number, guys. When you when you come up to a situation, GTS it. They say Google that. That's what they call it. it's really a curse word, but I don't want to say. But GTS it, and you better figure out how to do it because you're the nurse responsible. So those places, like I said, are not the best to practice in if you're not confident in your skills, like a acute skill rehab unit, because it's like almost like an emergency because they come in only for a few days and then they leave. The good part about that type of job, your patients that get on your nerves are gone. They do not stay long on that unit. So, um. You learn all your skills, like on the skills rehab unit. Like, you might have some psych drugs. You're going to have to keep calling pharmacy. You call in the doctor. You, I mean, you're getting all your LP. Like, you feel like a nurse when you're doing that type of position. And I did that for, like, a year. So, I had, like, got so much experience, like, clysis with, like, the IV that goes into your fat. Like, I did so, so many ejections and regular oral meds. That's the regular pass, but... I learned how to delegate and supervise. I was a supervisor, if, excuse me, supervisor at night. If you're LPN working nights, you are in charge. Um, a lot of them was trying to sleep on me. So when I came up in there, people started to work because I'm like, uh, I need help. You know, like this is what we're doing. Um, your Foley's coming to play, doing all that stuff that you was learning in school. Get on a job like that. Now you can fight and say, hey, I don't want two days of exp uh, training. I need a week of training to like get this down packed if you don't have no experience. But like if you're comfortable with the stuff that I'm saying that you're going to be doing, well, go ahead and do it. Like I said, my goal as a, to be a nurse, no matter what kind of nurse I wind up being, at the end of the day, I want to be competent and safe in what I'm doing. I don't want to hurt nobody's families. Of course, in that type of setting also, you have a lot of hospice patients. And I mean, yeah, that job, it wasn't like the highest pay, but it was the best experience. And so that's what I'm seeking now as an RN because the RN lifestyle, guys, they are unstable. These people are dying left and right and you're supposed to know what to do. You're supposed to know hospital protocols. It comes down to policy now when you're dealing with the hospital. You can't just be an LPN and try to figure out and improvise. They have everything in a hospital. So they're watching you every move. So that's the type of stress I'm talking about. So I'd rather get the experience and then the money will come. So don't make that a priority. But that's just it, guys. I didn't want to make this video super long. I just wanted to be real, keep it funky, and just let y'all guys know what to expect out there. Um, you could always go on, um, is it glassdoor.com? I think it's glassdoor.com. Anyway, there's a website. It tells you all the salaries if you type in the salary for LPN in long-term care or for this. It will pull up your state, the job that you want, and it'll pull up the exact salary that is that people were getting in that job. So just remember too, here's another hint that they don't tell you. If the job offers you like this awesome sign-on bonus as a new LPN, let me tell you something. The pay is going to be low. Anytime a job you come on, they're like, oh, your, um, your sign-on bonus is going to be like $10,000. Okay, yeah, it's going to be $10,000, but guess what? Your pay is going to be like $8 an hour. So just keep in mind, don't get so over like, oh, they got a sign-on bonus. Let me sign on. Because those are the jobs that be messy. I'm just letting you know that. Like, I didn't even finish getting my sign-on bonus. I had to get out of that acute care that I was in because it was just getting too messy. So I got out of there. But what some people do is get their sign-on bonus. Then they quit and go to the next job and get another sign-on bonus. I don't do that. I stick to my company. I'm committed. So, but I'm just putting that out there. So anyway, I was doing some name changes on my channel. I um, wanted something more that relate to my whole experience that I'm going through this transitioning. So I thought student nurse... Student nurse RN was a better fit because I'm always going to be a student. I started as a nurse and now I'm ending that RN. So that's kind of why I've changed my name. And I think it's just a little bit better than what I had. It was kind of long what I was saying. So hashtag student RN. Student nurse RN is my new name. So anyway, for those who joined, thank you for all your subscriptions, your views, your, your uh, message. Please put some comments below, guys. 
I'm trying to help everybody out there in the game. Opinions, Armands. I do not shade against either one. I respect everyone. CNAs, whatever. So anyway, you guys, this is your student nurse art and Sierra coming with you with another great video. I hope you like it. Please have a blessed day. Practice safely, please. Don't hurt nobody else, y'all. Practice safe. Anyway, you guys have a blessed day.